I'm back. Did you miss me? Hello everyone. I, I know it's been a hot second since I filmed the video. So I'm back to do I not a full wrap up of the books I've read in July because I read 29 and I just I don't think anyone wants another half an hour long wrap up video where I talk about all those books. So I'm just going to talk about the 10 favourite books that I've read which are my kind of highlights from last month. Knowing me, this will probably be half an hour long anyway, so let's get going. I'm going to start about, about? I'm going to start with the books that I read on audiobook that I don't have physical copies of. Who knows, maybe I'll actually work out technology and be able to get a picture up. Magic. Don't get your hopes up too high there. Uh, but the first one that I read was a non-fiction book called The Outrun by Amy Liptrot, I want to say. I always want to say lip brush or something wrong but it is about it's kind of part memoir but also part nature writing and I think it won the Wainwright Prize a few years ago so I'm, my hand's gonna do weird things I'm not holding anything now this is why I need a mug wait there we go my hands will stay more still now that's lipstick mark classy um <laughs> but this this was about her getting over her alcohol addiction so part of it is about growing up in the Orkney Islands and trying to escape that and moving to London and her descent into addiction and her recovery, I suppose, but her fluctuations between getting better and getting worse. But it's also linked to how she gets into studying nature writing and it's a lot about the Orkney Islands and the birds that live there and just the nature around that part of Scotland and it was just really beautifully written because it's a very personal human story but it's also the, all of the imagery of the landscape was just wonderful and, and it's got a nice Scottish narrator which is always relaxing to listen to so I would highly recommend that one. Another one that I read for Jane Austen July was Longbourn by Joe Bacon which I heard about when Katie from Books and Things read it last year I think um, as part of a challenge to read a book that is a retelling of a Jane Austen novel. I will link Katie down below by the way, she's wonderful, always check her out. Um, but it's Pride and Prejudice retold through the perspective of the servant, which I thought was such a clever idea and it really really works considering that Pride and Prejudice is my favourite novel. I think that this was really well thought out but it is different in the sense that it really isn't a pretty version. I'm not, I'm not saying Austen is just pretty but there's a lot more political issues in here about the Napoleonic Wars that are being fought, there's a lot about slavery and just the general drudgery of working class life as a servant. But it was really clever and the, there's just so many in things about about the Pride and Prejudice so it, it's it's a great, great read and I'd really highly recommend it if that is one of your favourite Austin. Or just generally, if you love Austin, I think it's clever. It's not subtle about the parallels you know, but, but it is still imaginative, I would say, and I think it's really well executed. Then the other book that I read in audio was, well, one of the books, is 10 minutes and 38 seconds in The Strange World by Elif, Elif Shafak, I want to say. I mean, let's be honest, I've got a history of not pronouncing people's names properly, so sorry. She's a Turkish author. I recently read Three Daughters by Eve by her and really loved that. And this has been longlisted for Man Booker. I hope it's shortlisted, but I hadn't read most of the longlist, so it's quite easy for me to say that. But I think it's really brilliant. It is the story of a girl called Layla, who is a sex worker, and her kind of sex worker name, if you want to call it that, is um, Tequila Layla. And at the beginning of the nar no narrative, novel, all the ends, uh, she is dying in a dumpster is essentially and it's her reminiscing in each minute about her life and it shows you how she got there so there's lots of detailed vignettes and flashbacks of her childhood and the things that have led to her demise. Serious trigger warnings for sexual violence and abuse and all of those things. Um, there's there's a lot of issues that are really well explored and there's just a lot about the trauma that women's bodies and minds are subjected to within a patriarchal society and how the traditions, both religious and non-religious in Turkey, are damaging to women and how they're restrictive and how put in more difficult positions because of their gender. 
and the way that society is run. So it, it's, it was just really brilliant and I loved the structure of it and the characters were so well written and fully formed. I, I highly, highly recommend it. If, even if you're not, if you're not a man booker person and you think that is not the prize for me, this is a book I think everyone should read. It's just, it's really brilliant and I think it isn't too highbrow literary. It's very accessible and I really loved it. Mm. Oh, I spilt some on myself. Oh, moving on to the physical books, I can put this down now. I reread Jane Austen July, Northanger Abbey, and Sense Sensibility, which was joyous, of course. This is my third time rereading this, or reading this. This is my most read Austen, and this is my second time having read Sense Sensibility. This, I've got to say, I gets better every time I read it. I think this is her funniest novel. It's about Catherine Morland, who is a girl obsessed with gothic novels and therefore the idea of being a heroine in your own story and it's really about how that skews her vision of the world and perception of certain things that go on around her because she likes to see gothic potential in situations and it's a lot about friendship as well and who isn't isn't your real friends and identifying that and you know gaining confidence in yourself i i just think it's a wonderful story and and it's just parodying the gothic which i love so if you like gothic literature or even if you don't i think it's just there for everyone i think it's quite an under underrated novel i think you either love it i think it's the best or you think this is this is weak but i loved reading this and i got a lot out of it reading it for the third time just brilliant and then Sense Sensibility. I I love this book. I have a soft spot for it. I think quite a lot to do with the film because I grew up watching it. I loved it so much. And it's about sisters and I love books like that. But I can sort of see. Sorry, I should say it's about the Dashwood sisters. <laughs> Eleanor and, oh my gosh, Marianne. I took too long to think of that. And how they, after the death of their father, have to move to Sussex actually not like it mentions not too far away from where I live and live a not not impoverished they're not impoverished but live a kind of less extravagant lifestyle than what they're used to because their mummy goes to their brother and it, it's interesting because there's a lot about inheritance in this book and concern about money and lineage um, and again there's obviously romantic situations in this novel I can sort of see how oh I don't want to spoil it because I, I know this is well known but someone might not have read it I don't want to do that but I, I can sort of see how Marianne's romance is not convincing to everyone um, and how their younger much younger sister Margaret is sort of not in this book very much because in the film she's in it more and yeah so I I admit this book has problems I think it's the first novel she wrote though so I'm going to let her off but I still love it you know I still really love this book so anyway, I also go on about Austen now. Moving on to Stay With Me by Aobami Adebayo, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize. What year? 2017. It didn't win. I am mad about this because I read the winner and I didn't think it was very good. I think The Power won that year and I really didn't like The Power. Wait, I'm going to check this. Hold on. Yes, this one in the year that this was shortlisted. This is so much a better book. But it doesn't matter because you know it's years ago. So moving on, this is about Yejidi and her husband Akin. And it's a lot, it's oh, it's set, actually say set in 1980s Nigeria, which is a very interesting time because there were a lot of political coups happening at that point. It's partly about their difficulty to conceive a child and the Nigerian expectations within that society that you really need to have children and keep the family going and because this has been difficult they their family decide that and Akin decides that he should take a second wife so it's partly about their marital struggles and Ijidi's emotional pain going through that process of change in their relationship and about motherhood or lack of motherhood uh, all, all against this political backdrop that is so interesting because I just just don't know much about it and it's culturally really interesting and I just oh I just loved it I got far too emotionally involved in these character stories and I got genuinely concerned for their safety so I, I really 
I love this. If if you like family based stories, then I think this will be great for you. If you like your mother and Gusudichi, I think you will like this book. I'm not saying they're exactly the same at all, but I think it's the same sort of character driven style of writing. Then on to a book that will probably be a book of the year and that is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison who so sadly recently passed away and it felt kind of fitting that I read this, her first novel just before she passed. I was absolutely blown away with this. I cannot believe this is her debut. What the hell. It looks like a poor black family, Pauline Coley, Pecola and Sam? Yes, yeah, Sam. This was an incredible book. I, I would almost say life-changing in the way that I've read books before about racism. I've read books before by BAME authors that have been very perceptive in the way that they talk about the experience of growing up and being made to feel like you're inferior and being treated differently because of your skin pigmentation. But this book really made me feel uncomfortable in, in a good way because the bluest eyes all this is all the idea of one of the protagonist's character Vicola wishing and praying every night to have blue eyes because of the ideal of beauty being white beauty and therefore blue eyes being linked to being white and it was just it was so powerful the way it was written it's and especially because it's set in 1940s in Ohio and I just thought it was kind of sad because this is still true and I, I'm sure it's changed a little bit since the 1940s but there is still a huge problem with the industry in terms of diversity and, and I just thought the way that she wrote this in such a poetic and emotive way it was, was just stunning and I absolutely am going to buy and read all of her books. I think I'm going to read Beloved next, which I know is also a bit harrowing or a bit, a bit disturbing and challenging, but it's the kind of book that I think everyone should read, whether it's because you will identify with it and there's comfort in that, to, for, to have someone articulate your experience in such incredible prose, or if it's because you just don't know, like me, what it's like to experience to be othered in terms of beauty and to not that I can say I understand, but I can try and like really listen to someone's experience. I, th I think that's, that's that's the most important thing to do, is, is just to admit, I don't know what this is like, but I'm happy for you to tell me in, in incredible writing. So just, if you haven't read it before, I mean, I, I would always say this is the best place to start because this is where I started and I haven't read anything else by it yet, but this is so good. It's so good. Oh my gosh. I just realised I didn't put any mascara on. Look at me, not making an effort. Slacking. Sorry, I keep looking in the wrong place. Something's distracting me. I need, to look. I need to look at you. Hello. Eye contact. It's all important. Right, sorry, reread. Small Island by Andrew Levy, which is one of my favourite books of all time. I should probably do that, shouldn't I? I should make a favourite books of all time video. But that'll be hard, you guys. Anyway, sorry, this is about two couples. One is Jamaican and one is English. So Gilbert and Hortense are from Jamaica and then Bernard and Queenie are from England and it's set both um, pre-war and post-Second World War. In the, so it's partly about the Second World War and Gilbert and Bernard's involvement in Second World War, how they fought in different ways for the British Empire. And then it's also about the Windrush generation and Hortense and Gilbert's journey to England and how they deal with their relationship partly because it's kind of a marriage of convenience and, and also just about the racism that they experience and the British attitudes towards Jamaican and West Indian people coming over to the British Empire, to Britain. And it's just so expected vision. It's it was much funnier than I remembered as well, just brilliant but I love how all of the four voices are so distinctive they are really their own narrator with their own style and that is quite hard to do well I think because I loved reading from every character's perspective and it's just a such such a human story of struggle 
and I love how it develops. I love the end. I just love all of it. You know, there's there's a lot of ups and downs, obviously, in this book. It's a good length, but I recently saw the play of this at the National Theatre, and I loved it, but there's even more in this book. There was a good BBC adaptation, but it missed out most of Bernard's side of it, and I find that really interesting. So the book is just unparalleled, and I'm, I need to read more by Andrew Levy, because this is still the only thing that I've read by her, which is sad, so going to rectify that but I also am kind of scared too because this is just the best thing ever and I, I doubt she's written a better book <laughs> but I was so glad to read this again and if you haven't read it please 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 read it because it's just flipping brilliant okay then we have a debut Woo. and that is The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil which I just knew I was going to love because it's set in Victorian London in 1850 and it's involved with the pre raphaelite artists so that's great and you guys I don't know how I didn't know this. I knew that the, the pre raphaelite Brotherhood had strange pets. I knew that Rossetti was very into having a kind of menagerie of animals in his back garden. I did not know that they were obsessed with wombats. And now I think wombats are the best thing ever. They are so cute and underrated. And and if, if the fact that there are wombats in this book, a wombat called Guinevere, in this book. That doesn't sell you in this book. I don't know what else will. But beyond that, it's not just about wombats. It's about Iris, who is an aspiring artist who falls in with the pre raphaelite set. But while she's at the Great Exhibition, there is a man called Silas who makes... Well, I, I don't want to say it's just taxidermy because it isn't just that, but he sort of makes oddities and the sort of thing that Victorians were really into. Um, and he sees Iris and becomes obsessed with her and it's he's this kind of sinister collector figure so it, it's it's partly about his obsession becoming out of hand and also Iris's ambitions as a woman which I really enjoyed there's a lot about the male gaze in this book and how women are often seen as a piece of art and not the artist and so it's, it's part about his trying to take ownership of that and to switch the role of not just being a model but being her own expressive self in an in artistic form and, and I just I loved that so much I thought it was really really well researched and and yeah wombats wombats and then last but not least we have the five or the longer title the five untold lives of the woman killed by Jack the Ripper by Hallie Rubenholt which will definitely just most definitely be on my favourite books of the year. I don't know why I said that in a subtle way, but we're gonna go with it. I studied Jack the Ripper and I read the encyclopedia on him and all the newspaper notes and the court cases that happened and all the different suspects and the letters that were sent to the police and the letters between the police and that's really interesting but this book really did highlight to me that the women's lives are not explored. No one really talks about them, they just say that they were all prostitutes and beyond that maybe where they lived and nothing else so it's kind of sad that often victims of crimes like murder they especially the women they just become a vessel to explore the man who's perpetrated these crimes and this really goes into detail about their lives it doesn't talk about the murders at all it, it's not focusing on that it's focusing on kind of busting all the myths and i loved that especially about how they weren't all prostitutes, but the way it was reported just generalised things or it wasn't researched properly because there just wasn't the interest in it and things were misreported. It really is so educational and really thoroughly well written. There's a good list of sources and bibliography at the back as well, which I will probably look at for some of my research because there was some stuff in pubs. That was good too. And I just loved this. I don't know if I can search more about, about it because it's quite self explanatory what it's about but if you have any kind of interest in this or any kind of interest in true crime while this isn't actually about the crime I think you would enjoy this there we go that was probably much longer than I wanted it to be soz not soz but tell me if you like this format more because I tend to read a decent amount of books and if I don't then I can always just talk about each one but would you, would you rather me just do a kind of highlights of the month or highs and lows of the month because I quite enjoy a rant so you know I'm always happy to talk about books that are disappointing. <laughs> Let me know if you prefer a, a shorter wrap up or if you want to know about every book I read. 
I would, I would be interested to hear. So thank you for watching me ramble my way through a video for the first time in a few weeks. That's nice. And I hope to see you soon for Bookish Shenanigans. Bye!